So hello everybody, it is Power Week, meaning that the Power BI team has released a new Power BI desktop update this time it is for March 2021. So a lot of updates, let's get started. So the first update is about Azure Maps. I don't know if you're aware of that, but you can actually use them in Power BI. There's a, a visual for that embedded. And you will have now new options for selecting points in the map. You have something that they call the range selection. And it is that you can select an area by distance or time. The thing that I am missing, and I, I have to look again further to see if it is there or not, because I have a use case for that, is to, to say if you are distance, like walking, biking, uh, driving, you know, the, di the difference will be quite big depending on how you are getting there. But otherwise, it is actually such a neat update. I love that on Google Maps, so it's nice that it's on Azure Maps too. You will be able also to do uh, polygon selection. It means like, you know, like a free form selection. You will be able to do like circle se selection. They call it radial selection and the box like square. So you can draw a square and pick points that way. So neat update for sure. So they have made some updates on the color picker. The update sees the pop-up behavior. So now instead of pop up popping up where the visuals are, it will pop up on the pane. So it's not in the way of what you're trying to do, you know, so you don't have to move it around all the time. And also you will be able to do use the escape to close that. And the thing that I'm missing for the color picker, which I think is the most important thing of all, is the eyedropper. So hopefully they will add soon, give it feedback, please, because that is a must in any color picker, in my opinion. Now, they have also done some updates on the field list. I actually disabled the field list uh, on the previous update because it just wasn't working for me. I'm going to enable it back. What they've done is now add measure is first. There was a lot of people that complain about that. They have also tightened, they say they have tightened the padding. So I guess we won't be having to, you know, drag to see the table names, which is quite nice. They have added the context, context menus back on hidden tables and they have fixed icon issues. So it's definitely going to get enabled again on my Power BI desktop. Anyhow, Okay, more updates to the small multiples. I love it when they actually add formatting options to the visual. It's very, very much needed. So for the small multiples, they're getting a little bit of love. And one of the things they have fixed is the title. So the title for each of the small multiples, you have now the option to word wrap. What they are telling you, though, is that if you word wrap and, you know, you have a, a, a name that is bigger, all the other ones will get the white space for it. You know, the, the, the place, the space is going to be the same for all of them. So you will get a space on the small ones. It's not that you can individually word wrap, it will word wrap everything. So be aware of that. And the next one is the behavior of the background. You know, you could change format the background from the February update. So now what happens is that when you add background, by default, it will be no feel of 0% transparency, which is actually quite nice. But you need to be aware of that all the small multiple visuals that you have with background, they are going to get reset to that, unfortunately. So you will have to format them back on. But after that, then the behavior will be 0% transparency and no feel. So the next update is the X axis con constant line for line charts. This is just for line charts. And it gives you the ability to create an X uh, line on, on your chart. And this is actually that I really like the idea. I've wanted this feature for the longest time. There is a but though, and it is that is a hard coded number. And in Power BI, everything is dynamic. So you cannot have a constant line with a hard coded number. Every time somebody clicks on something, that constant line is not going to be applicable anymore. It has to, you know, it has to adjust to, to, to the environment that it lives in. It needs to be conditional format or, or a measure, in my opinion. So I hope that they'll fix that. I've given them the feedback. We will see what they do. But I'm not sure how it's useful to have it as a constant value, to be honest. But yeah. There are also some updates on the direct query composite model thing, right? So now you have the ability to, you will have the ability to see display folders and to see also the sort by columns 
when you are connecting to a data set on Power BI or analysis services. So that's the update. So they have made some updates on the model user interface. They've changed that in February. They changed the way that the arrows, you know, the relationship arrows looked. They got feedback that that was not too good when you have a lot of tables on the model. So they decided to change it back to the original. But now they have put a background to the cardinality, the, the one to many or the many to many icons so you can see them better. But they are still in the way in the place that they were before. And uh, not only that, they have introduced a new icon for limited relationships. Limited relationships is something that you will only see on composite models when you have, for example, direct query together with import models. And uh, it happens on composite models and on many to many relationships on composite models. That means that limited relationship means that you cannot guarantee a one side of the relationship, okay? So good for you to be aware of if you're using composite models. Another thing that you are going to notice if you are connecting live to your models, for example, analysis services, you will see that the error, if you get an error on a measure, it will actually, if you hover over the error icon, it will tell you what the error message is, which is quite nice actually. So there are actually some updates for DAX, for the calculation engine. There are. There is a new function called if eager. If eager, they say that it is, has the same behavior as if, but it is more effective. But it is more effective on how it makes the calculations in the background. Okay, now this is what they are saying, and we need to be careful with that because I was wondering if, you, if eager is the same as if, why not retire if or change the functionality of if? But this is what they are saying. They say this function it doesn't, you should not use this function always instead of if. This says we recommend if unless you have a specific situation or you have performance issues. So they say use if, but if you have a specific situation that we will discuss in a DAX Fridays, then use if eager. So yeah, be mindful of that. It would be nice to also compare if eager with switch and see how those compare. But how about we leave that for a DAX Fridays? So they have also updated the behavior of Calculate, and this is actually a very nice thing because as a beginner, I remember running to travel all the time, all the time. And I do run into travel from time to time now, but I, it's, I know what it is and I can fix it quickly. And it was like, as they say in the example, let's say that you have a total sales measure and you want to know the sales by a product. So you would probably write Calculate the measure total sales and then put product color equal red and that will give you an error. What you needed to do was you need to explicitly call a filter in there for it to work. Well, you don't need to do that anymore. It is going to work by itself because I'm guessing that they have, they will themselves will write the, the filter in there. I, I, I guess, I don't know how they actually solved it, but this is going to make life a lot easier for beginners, for sure. So this is actually a really nice update. And the Power BI service have actually got some love too. So when you know you can feature uh, reports on, on the home on Power BI service, now you're going to see who actually featured that report. And uh, another one, this is actually quite nice, and it was shown at Ignite. It is uh, a data set uh, view where you can have more information about that specific data set. And this is the information that is in there. I'm going to read it because there's quite many things. So you will be able to see the information about the data set. And um, when was last refreshed, you will be able to see a list of all the reports that used a specific data set. You will be able to have usage metrics for the last 30 days. You will see be able to view lineage, create a report and analyze in Excel. I'm not sure if this means that the analyze in Excel feature that they announced at Ignite works now. I'll give it a go and then do a video if that is the case. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video. And uh, you will be able to create a data set from a template. So that is actually quite nice. I really like it that you, you have it on a pane and you can actually see everything about that data set. They are pushing more and more for reusability of data, and this is a nice addition to that for sure. Another thing that you're going to be able to do is you will be able to filter by endorse app when looking for apps on the Power BI service. So nice. When it comes to template apps, 
developers that are creating template apps will now have the possibility to tick a box and allow the users or the customers to download the PBX file if they wish to do so. Embedded, so the embedded has a new playground that will allow you to easily learn and discover new features for Power BI Embed. So check that out. And they want you to they want to remind you also that there is a new Contoso demo that you can play with to see how the embedded feature ex experience looks like and you can play with it. Now, last but not least, Power BI Desktop will only work from Windows 8.1 and forward. All older versions of Windows will not work anymore. External tool integration has been generally available. And at the last of the blog, but the most important thing of all is that there is a new change log for Power BI desktop changes. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Power BI releases more than one, or the Power BI team releases more than one update. It's not the March, February update. In the middle, you get also updates. And it is mainly to, to do quick fixes, right? Things that they believe that is important that they get fixed right away. But we never knew. We never knew what it was. We never knew what the updates were, when things were updated. And so now they have a web page where you can actually go and see what has been updated in those in-between updates. So this is actually quite nice. And hopefully they will keep the link in the Power BI monthly update so we can just go there and check what's all about. Okay, guys, so this is not actually all. They have released updates for Power Query. Unfortunately, it's in a separate blog. And this video is going to get too long, so I'm going to do the Power Query update video on Monday. Okay, so we will go through the features that they released there. So for now, this is uh, all for me. My favorite feature this month, there's nothing really that stands out. I think that is really, really nice that they are putting some love to the visual pane. It really needs it. I like they're adding formatting features to visuals. But I wish that they will add formatting features to existing visuals. For example, conditional formatting online charts, legends on maps. You know, you need to write DAX to, to have the width of a, of a matrix, which is insane to me. So hopefully they will continue to give them some love, which is definitely needed. That will make my world <laughs> rock. So yeah, that is for me. What is your favorite update this month? Let me you know in the comment box and I'll see you on Monday with the Power Query updates. How about that? Enjoy your weekend. Bye bye.